So wave is an interesting concept. If you take a planter, you can split it into about two pieces. And the first half of the planter is all about seed. It's about spacing, it's about singulation, it's about dropping the exact right amount of seeds in the exact right position. But then the second half of the planter is all about getting that seed incorporated into the soil after it's been dropped. So that's what we really took off to try to solve with the 360 wave systems. How do we make a seed get packed in tight into the soil where it has good firm soil contact and there's no dry dirt around it? And it actually took us clear back clear back into the late 90s, honestly, before I was even alive. There was a concept out there that uh, basically ran a knife down the sidewall of your trench. And what that knife did is it cut the wet soil off the side of the trench, dropped it over the seed, and the knife was sold as a starter placement tool. But it always came on top in yield trials, and uh, we never really knew why until we started doing some more digging. And the problem with that knife is it had it had a lot of difficulties um, when it came to operating it. It tended to bend, um, it would lose its position. If you turned, it would run over seed. There's a lot of challenges with that, and it kind of got kicked to the wayside because of those challenges. We looked at it and said, we need to figure out why this thing works and bring it back into our system. When, when we dug into the WAVE project, we were looking for a concept that would put more soil around the seed. As we talked about those old um, shoes that would run down in the trench, and cut that soil over, that concept really intrigued us. So we started doing some studies around closing and looking at it and saying, why does it matter whether the soil is pushed down from the top or pushed in from the side? And if you go out into a trench and you start digging, what you'll find really quick is when you take soil and you push it down from the top, there's two things that tend to happen. One is it's very difficult to get the seed V to come all the way closed. And two, you tend to knock in dry dirt ahead of your wet dirt that you're pushing from the top. So what the blade did for us was it cut the wet dirt from the side of the side of the seed trench wall and peeled it over the seed. So we started building prototypes trying to figure out what matters and what does it. And a couple of things we found is if you drag residue on a blade, that's a very big problem. And if a blade runs over the seed instead of beside the seed, that's another really big problem. And then if you hit a rock with the blade, the blade will actually get broke or bent, which in turn messes up its ability to cover the seed. So today we have a wave system with all of these features, and let's dig into a little bit of why each feature exists and what it's there for. One of the challenges we had designing the wave system was making the blade in such a way that it would cause no damage, but it would do what we needed. As you can imagine, we're three quarters of an inch away from seed, and we need to maintain that very, very carefully. And so the shape of the blade is very important. The angle that the blade is bent at, the angle that the bottom of the blade runs, all of those things matter heavily because we're counting on the shape of that blade to steer the blade and keep it away from the seed. And part of the struggle with getting the blade shape right was it's very soil type dependent. It depends on the residue you have in your soil. It depends on what kind of soil you have. And so as much time as you could spend at a computer drawing up designs, creating ideas, what really mattered was crawling on your knees in a cornfield and looking at the blade as it ran, looking at the corn plants that came up later, digging seeds, looking at where did the blade go, where was the seed at. We spent time in Texas, we spent time in Illinois and many other states watching planters run because it all matters. Your conditions matter. And Designing a blade that can meet all of those conditions was definitely one of our biggest challenges. In addition to blade shape being a challenge for us, one of our challenges was the mounting structure inside the row unit. We started out taking the John Deere mounting casting for the closing system and just extending a heavy cantilevered casting off of that that would hold our blade. That worked really well here in central Illinois in our nice light soils. And then we headed for out of state and pretty quickly found out there was a spot in Minnesota where we could plug a wave whole row unit in a matter of minutes when you put it on a planter. So we had a farmer up there that was very gracious to us. He gave us a couple acres of land to work with and we took a four row planter up there, rented a tractor and started running. And we found out really quick what matters and what doesn't. We quickly had to adapt to where our casting that held our blade was very small, very thin, and very narrow. And it has a shape of a C, and that shape is very important because what we learned is there's residue and there's dirt that builds up in the gauge wheels and in the row units, and it flows up and, generally speaking, wants to fall out between the, 
between the gauge wheels and the closing wheels. So what's important about the C shape is it comes forward into the opening disc and then comes back down and out the back and holds the blade. And that leaves that window open where mud balls and corn stalks and that type of residue can escape the system and we're not entrapping it in. And that was one of the keys to making Wave a success so that farmers could run in soil conditions across the country. And then another challenge we had was what we call the trash guard. So the trash guard is the small piece of metal on the front end of the blade and it handles the transfer of residue from the opening disc to the main blade. If you don't have a trash guard, what happens is residue builds up ahead of the blade and then eventually will plug your whole row unit. So we spent a long time working on that trash guard, trying to get it to transfer where a corn stalk comes underneath the opening disc and then rides right under the trash guard and right under our blade without disturbing seed and without catching and causing other plugging problems in the row unit. So when we first started out, we had a solid fixed blade running in a trench right next to the seed. And one of the first problems we ran into is the minute you run over something, the blade is bent or broken. So that introduced what we call the rock joint, which basically allows our blade to ride along the side of the seed trench. And then when it hits a rock or some other foreign hard object in the field, it has the ability to ride up and over that and then snap back down. The blade depth is very important. If you think about how it's closing, it's cutting the moist soil from the sidewall and it's rolling it over the seed. If the blade is too high, you won't get enough of that to actually cover the seed. If the blade's too low, you have the potential to displace the seed. So there's a hard stop that controls the lower depth of the blade and holds it at the correct position on the lower end. And then on the top, there's just a spring. So that spring has to be heavy enough to keep the blade down, but also light enough that instead of damaging something, it will rise up when you hit a rock. There's a vertical pivot pin in the center of the wave system that the trash guard and the blade pivot around. This pivot is very important. It allows us several things. It allows our blade to trail behind the row unit, which allows us to go around a curve and keep the blade away from the seed because the blade is actually steered by the soil flow on either side of it and the force that that soil applies steers the blade. If you curve to the left, there's a stop that pushes the blade over away from the seed. If you curve to the right, the stop is not there and it's requiring the blade to actually trail off to the side. But that pivot joint is also very important because the blade and the trash guard are wear items. And so after so many acres or years of running, those will need to be replaced. And the beauty of that joint is it's a simple pin removal. You can put a new trash guard and a new blade in there, stick the pin back through, and your wave system is back up to spec. The next challenge for us was making a blade that would last. We, uh, we had a shape we liked, we knew it worked really well from an agronomic standpoint, we knew it worked well for following curves, but it would wear out in a few hundred acres. So we started investigating hard surfacing and different treatments that we could put on it to make it last. And uh, that was a very challenging and fun project as you can imagine. We, uh, we had an idea, we got a whole bunch of blades coated with this special treatment. We actually took them to South Texas and I remember planting in South Texas, we had a 32-row uh, planter and the farmer, we put it all on, he took off across his field, he picked up at the end and underneath every blade was just a big U-shaped chunk of corn stalks and residue just, just caught on the blade. And uh, that was a little disappointing as a design engineer at that phase of life, but we, uh, we got to looking at it and the problem with that hard surface was it was basically like hard metal crystals that we blew onto the blade and those crystals were really hard. You could hit them with a hammer and they wouldn't come off. But what they created was imagine a saw blade that's very dull but still has teeth. And so it would catch everything but it wouldn't cut anything. So we went back to the drawing board and we tried again and it took us a couple rounds, but we eventually got to the point where we had a hard surface treatment that would make our blade last. We could get roughly 100 acres a row out of it, which has always been our goal. Here at 360, we're a firm believer in seed firmers. We know their value, we know the value of pressing the seed into the bottom of the trench, and so we decided that's, part of, that's something we wanted to be part of WAVE. It's a challenge to get a firmer that applies the right amount of pressure and lasts for significant periods of time, isn't worn out, doesn't drag seed. We spent quite a bit of time working on the shape and trying to understand how does the seed, when it leaves your seed tube, come down, how does it land, and then how do we get in there and firm right over the top of it without dragging it or building up soil. All of the seed delivery systems had to be compatible, and that's part of the challenge of the firmer. It made the space claim very small, but we spent a lot of time digging seed and we were able to figure it out. 
We believe the Wave system is an excellent closing system. We're very excited about its ability to curl moist dirt over the seed and allow your closing wheels a very easy job to pack a seed in well. But that's only half of what Wave is all about. Wave is also about starter fertilizer placement. And starter fertilizer is a challenge. It's difficult to know where do you put it and how much do you put on. And the beauty of Wave is when you're three quarters of an inch away from the seed and slightly below, you're in a very safe spot to run a high concentration of fertilizer because you're far enough away that the seed itself is not going to soak up the fertilizer, just the roots are. One of the things when you think about how a seed grows is the roots start out from the seed and the first root out of the seed is called the radical root. And the radical root, generally speaking, grows off to the side and down at an angle. And that root is what we want to be able to contact with starter fertilizer. Right from the start, we want to be pumping fertilizer into that seed. So when we're three quarters of an inch over and just slightly below, that's a perfect location for the radical root to come out and soak up that fertilizer. And then the seedling roots come right after it and eventually crown roots once the plant's grown up. One of the things that's really fun and exciting as a design engineer is crawling through a cornfield that we've just planted and you're at V2, V3, pretty young plants, and you start digging, and what you're looking for is where are the roots and where are they going? And you find radical roots that have grown over into that band from the 360 wave, and when you get to where the wave blade ran and that fertilizer was placed, you get a root that's covered in small, hairy roots. And that's an amazing sign, because what that means is that root is sucking up starter fertilizer and pumping it back to the seed, and that's a good, healthy start for that plant. Today there's lots of different closing wheels in the market. Everybody has one they want you to try. And here at 360, it's been really exciting to be part of a completely new concept that looks at closing from a whole new angle and says, let's just open the floor and look for a new idea that can really change things. And going through that as a project and digging into that has really shown that in closing, it's all about details. They make the biggest difference.